Okay. Welcome to Six Figure Souls, doing good and making money. This is the weekly podcast where I highlight entrepreneurs who have left the grind and designed a business in alignment with who they are. This is a very special season nine where I'm interviewing my co-authors of our third collaborative book in the Ultimate Guide series, Leaving Your Legacy. I'm your host, Camille Miller, an internationally known business strategist and life accelerator, founder of the Natural Life Business Partnership and leader of the Soul Professional Society. Today we have in our studio, Dr. Anna Bartolucci. She is a multi-published author, a psychologist, and a writing mentor. Thank you, Anna, for joining me today. Thank you so much, Camille. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. So I always love to start our podcast with a little bit, a story about you. Um, and we'll talk about why you decided to be in the book, but I know a little more <laughs> about you than our listeners. So I want to share the story <laughs> of who you are and because mm -hmm. you have the psychologist and mm -hmm. becoming the writing, writing coach and mentor after being, um, an international best-selling author under a pen name. So tell us a little bit about that story. Uh, well, um, according to my mom, I wrote my first story when I was two. So I have always <laughs> been a writer. Um, please keep in mind, I have never actually seen evidence of this story, but <laughs> she swears that it, it happened. And um, apparently it was about a bunny and what it lacked in plot and character development. It more than made up for an enthusiasm. And then I pretty much wrote stories like all the way through school. Uh, when I got to high school and college, it ended up being sort of an escape for me, uh, a way to manage my stress. Like if I had a lot of stress stuff going on in the real world, I would end up like just writing a story, going into a an imaginary world. And uh, when I was in graduate school, I started submitting short stories for publication. And I got my first book contract in 2013. And since then I've written of 20 plus fiction to nonfiction books. And so it's always been there, always been a part of my life and has always been, I guess, right along with psychology because, you know, people are fascinating and I love working with them, whether it's, you know, in stories or uh, in waking life. Yeah. And you've decided to transition to a new business of being a writing coach and mentor and help people bring their stories to life. And one of the things I love about your business is for people that do these collaborative book series, that you can help them take their chapter and actually complete their life story. So um, tell us a little bit about that and, and how you decided to help people tell their story in the world from, because you're a di very different type of writer publicly, mm -hmm. right? And then, but telling your story for helping people tell their story is a little bit different. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it was it was honestly something that happened accidentally. And I do talk about it in my chapter. So I'm not going to yeah. go into it a lot here. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, let's just say that it was one of those things that happened unexpectedly. And so now for the last two years, I've been helping other mental health professionals to write their stories, get the books out that they have always been wanting to write. And uh, of course, that also involves you know, telling their stories as well, because you, know, you can't really help other people unless you're telling your story too. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, so for this particular book, for your collaborative story, of course, I've read your chapter and mm -hmm. I love how it told, even though I know you, it told me a little bit about your backstory and getting through um, college and starting your writing journey. Um, I should say graduate school up through mm -hmm. your writing journey. Um, and it's very inspiring. I want to throw that out there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> very inspiring. And, um, but I wanted to ask what it was like to write in this chapter. Like what made you decide to be a part of this book when you're already a very successful author? Uh, well, my publications are very heavily weighted towards fiction and I wanted something more out there in nonfiction, and I had really enjoyed going into my story a little bit in Better Sleep for the Overachiever, my second fiction or my second nonfiction. And honestly, I'd done a little bit in the uh, the first one as well, 
uh, Business Basics for Private Practice. And so this gave me the chance to really highlight the story, not just as, you know, a part of something else. And also, you know, I'm an, I, you know, self-confessed overachiever, totally. <laughs> and, you know, as overachievers, we tend to be like, okay, let's achieve more and more and more. Whereas the lesson in the chapter is where the universe has kind of knocked me back and made me take a, uh, I guess, focus on quality over quantity, shall we say? Mm, I like that. I like that. Was it was it a very different experience for you to be part of a collaborative book? Yes, I am used to working on my own. I do have one unpublished novel with a friend of mine, mm -hmm. but generally, no, I have been, I tend to uh, do all my writing by myself. Okay. <laughs> well, you did it by yourself. Yes. It just goes but, through a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And honestly, it wasn't really that much different from the books that I have traditionally published, like, you know, going through the edits and the copy edits and all that stuff. That was pretty much the same process for me. Oh, that's good to know. That's good to know for me because I've only done collaborative books and mm -hmm. I hope to get my full story out there at some point, at some mm -hmm. point that'll, that'll be out there. Um, so if people were thinking of, um, writing a book, writing their story, or they always had that thought of doing it, what's a good way for them to get started other than probably doing a challenge or something great with you? But mm -hmm. um, what are those first steps that you always tell them that maybe they can start with? Uh, so I had come up with a, um, with a pillar or a three pillar method, and I can't exactly remember what they were right now, but... <laughs> um, you know, the first one is awareness. So being aware of when things happen in your life that connect you back to your story and making notes of those. Because when you're writing your story, you are putting yourself out in the world in a new way and you want to be able to start connecting. So for example, like with your story, like when was the last time that you encountered something or did something or had like a fun synchronicity? that connected with it. Uh -huh, I get to ask the question now. Yeah, I don't Sorry, I'm a, know. <laughs> As a, I'm a psychologist. I can't help it. Um, so when in my journey, like in my journey, did say that again? Or like just in the, like in the last week, were there any little concrete moments that really helped you with, like helped you connect with your story? So, okay, well, I can, while well, you think I can give you one of mine. Okay. Uh, so I was at a convention this past weekend and I went to a session where somebody had, you know, had written a book and they were talking about some of the, the stuff in the book as well as other things. And they passed out a paper version of, uh, of an exercise. And I went up to them afterwards and I said, why did you do that instead of having people trade their email addresses to you? to get this exercise because that way they would have ended up on your email list. And he said, oh, that would have been a great idea. And I said, well, you know, how much training have you had with writing marketing? He's like, none at all. Our publishers don't give us any. So that connected back to like my desire to help authors, you know, not just write their books, but to, like be able to get it, you know, have the basics to get them out in the world. And so, you know, that connects like with my that. story because you know, I've definitely been trying to figure out ways to do that with my own books. Yeah. Oh, that that's pretty unique because I can say like I've written my story in three different books and I was actually in my staff meeting this morning. I said, you know, now that I'm done with this series, I kind of want to take my stories and everything I wrote and, and do a single publication of the same stories, but maybe add mm -hmm. to them or, you mm -hmm. know, lengthen them kind of an unabridged version of just my parts is mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. Right. Um, and it's really to get it out there, mm -hmm. tell my story in a different way. But the interesting thing to me is even when I reread them, I've grown since I've, I've written them. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not that person anymore of mm -hmm. the original. The first time I wrote my story, I was in my very first book, it was the first time I was telling people about what, why I started doing what I did, but it went through a nasty divorce and issues mm -hmm. and 
all of that. And I was like, but once it was out there, I was empowered by it. Mm -hmm. So I think sharing stories empowers people. And oh, that, was my, that was my aha, like it's okay because it drew more people towards me that were going through the same things. Mm -hmm. In the second book, I talked a lot about my failures as, grow, as growing my business. Think like mistakes I made along the way, you know, huge debt I got into with those mistakes or hiring the wrong mm -hmm. people and which I think everybody does, right? Mm -hmm. and, this, and the third book is more about leaving my legacy and what's right. happened to me in the past. But literally before this, I was doing some final edits. We're in our final versions. And I can still see I've grown from the type of time I wrote that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, do I change it or do I just let it go now? <laughs> but it's, but it's a talking piece, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's been one of the fun things about being a writer for so long is yeah. I go back and read even books that I wrote a couple of years ago and it's like somebody else wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> like, like oh oh yeah I wrote that it feels like somebody else's words because my yeah. mind's always on to the next thing but yeah that's another great thing about writing a book is that yeah it gives you gives you those markers for growth yeah the and the one thing I noticed with this book is I just sat down and started with dialogue my first mm -hmm. book I didn't even know how to do that Mm -hmm. Right. They had like uh, our publisher, Laura, had to come to me and she's like, you got to break this down and talk, like show them. Don't just tell them what happened, like show them through dialogue. And that was mm -hmm. so and I had to literally take my copy and replace it all. <laughs> this time mm -hmm. I sat down and I just started that way. And I was like, wow, I grew. I grew, too. But I'd love yeah. what you're saying also about once you have the book because I think so many people create these books, but then they don't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. They haven't marketed them or done anything with it, or they can grow from a book that they've already started or pieces. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that have pieces of work. Oh yeah. All definitely. over the place. Yeah. I think I have an outline somewhere for a solo book. I couldn't tell you where it was, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I wrote, I, I remember writing the outline. So mm -hmm. it's out there somewhere that, that will come. I love that. Yeah. yeah so and go ahead. I was gonna say, and if you think about it, when you have a business, you have these pieces of content that you're making all the time, whether it's social media posts, LinkedIn posts, newsletters, blog posts, and people think that they're starting from zero, whereas they're really not. Yeah. I, I think that was a big aha for me. And I think that's when I started to do the outline. I was like, I teach all the time for mm -hmm. years, every single month. I teach the free master classes and I teach within the community. And I'm like, those are topics that can literally be chapter titles or mm -hmm. you know, like the next thing. But yeah, I think it, it it is a little easier for people. But do you find that people are very scared or once they wrote their story, they panic right before it's published? That can definitely happen. Yeah, because it's like this next wave of imposter syndrome can happen. Yes. Like, yeah, oh yeah, no, yeah. what if people don't like it? What if people then don't like me? And so then, yeah, I tell my coaching clients like, okay, well, think about the last book that you read that you didn't like, you know, because we've all had those experiences. Yeah. And do you think that that author is the worst human being ever put on earth and that they deserve to be kicked off the planet? No, it was just a book you didn't like. Yeah. And, and I have read books that are widely popular mm -hmm. and sat there and went, I don't get it. Like, oh, I yeah. just didn't like the book, mm -hmm. right? It's just, yep. you know, that I, and, and I remember in, um, not my first, I think it was the second book, not my first book, but the second book, I'm um, talking to my publisher about the different styles of writing because I felt like the first one was very clean. And then the second one, there were very different styles and stories and the way people took it. And I learned from that that different readers are going to resonate with different authors too. Like yep. not everyone's going to like my style, mm -hmm. right? They might like other authors. So that's all a part of it too. And And when you read a book more than once, you resonate with it differently each time. Mm -hmm. There's there's always something that you missed. Exactly. Which I love. 
Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, um, I'm trying to think of all the questions I ask all the authors. One is why you chose to be in this book, which you've already answered. Um, and the, I ask every author in this book about lessons that they shared at the, at the end or or part of the lesson in their chapter. Can you give us Mm -hmm. a little bit of a clue of what your lesson was that you shared with people? Ah, uh, yes. So I encourage people to go back and look at the things that they didn't, or that maybe didn't work out for them like they had hoped in a different way. Mm, I love that. It's kind of like as their lesson in life. Exactly. Yeah. I can see how that reflected on your chapter too, because your mm-hmm. chapter, your your chapter was so inspiring without giving it all away, but it was, it, it reminded me of, um, when I was doing my doctorate work, um, and I never finished my dissertation, by the way, (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) never was published, never anything. And, and it reminded me a little bit of that struggle of, oh my gosh, now what, what am I going to do? Right. Of not knowing your next steps in life. And Mm -hmm. it was just a beautiful, inspiring story. And, and to know you at this side, and and how successful you've been in all areas of your life is really amazing. Oh, thank you. You're I welcome. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yes, I, I, I don't know if this is being recorded on video, but I have my feline supervisor here. He would like to take credit for some of my success. <laughs> my um, my oldest child told me because they came home with a cat that I am now Mm. in love with my grand kitty Mm. and um, they're going to be moving out again soon. And I'm a little torn. Um, But they had told me because I write sometimes um, the name is Jinx and Jinx sits on my lap while I write, especially if I'm writing classes, I go sit on the couch, I put my feet up and I'm writing ideas down before I actually craft the class. Mm -hmm. I do this almost every Saturday morning with a cup of coffee. I'm crafting what something else looks like. And the kitty used to sit with me. And um, she said, you know, there is a famous cat that um, some famous published, um, it was really a scientist, I think she told me, that actually quoted, not quoted, but signed the paper. I think it's a very famous published paper signed it with the cat's name because the cat oh, yeah, put the cat is the, the author I've yeah. heard that and is now yeah. like some huge prize winner along with them because they were both noted as the authors <laughs> of the paper and I was like oh my god that's so cute <laughs> okay do you want to be a co-author on my next book Mr. Yeah. Kitty <laughs> that's pretty awesome yeah this is usually done by audio, but we do release the video as well. So Kitty is there for the people that can see. Okay. If you are driving, it's just freaking cute. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, he is a he is a gray tabby with white chest and paws. Are you cute? Sometimes he talks. Yeah, mine's a talkative one, and I love it. Okay. Um. Any parting wisdom? As the cat does a giant yawn. <laughs> so when you're going through one of those periods in life that let's be honest wait that sucks you know go ahead and have your feelings and then when you're a little bit on the other side or a little bit more through it think about okay what can I learn about this and it can be even something like one of my patients told me a couple of weeks ago that he has learned through um, a really tough experience. Like I am strong. I am really freaking strong. And, you know, and sometimes that's, that's a lesson that we need to learn. I love that. That, that is a great way to end. We're going to end on that because that is fabulous. Thank you. Anna, thank you so much for being a co-author, for being on the podcast and for lending your great words of wisdom to our audience. Thank you so much, Camille. What's a good way for people to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you and your work? Uh, So if they would like to learn more about my books, uh, you can find me at my pen name, ceciliadominic.com. You can also find my books, uh, my nonfiction books under my regular name, which will be in the show notes. 
and as well as my practice website. And the best way to connect with me is honestly on LinkedIn. Like I never thought that LinkedIn could be fun, but it is surprisingly yes. fun. Of course, I am also the meme queen of LinkedIn. So <laughs> there's that too. I love that. Yes. LinkedIn is very powerful. Very powerful. Yes. I think it's I think it's the best social media. Not for business, it is the best social yes. media out there. Yes. If you are listening to um, our show and driving, all of this information is in the show notes and you can get the information um, through our podcast at any time. So you do not have to stop or try to write something down. Be safe if you are driving. All right. Anna, thank you so much for being a part of the show today. Well, thank you so much, Camille. Well, I very much enjoyed it. Thank you listeners for joining me today. If you loved this interview, please share it with your friends and pick up our book coming out September of 2024. You can also join others by checking out the soulprofessional.com community. If you are a soul professional, you live in a higher vibration, you have an alternative approach to business and you're here to help repair the world. If that sounds like you, please check us out. Everyone have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.